Um, it's 3.03, um, and so I think we can get started um, to go through the slides and make sure there's enough time uh, for questions and comments at the, the end of the presentation. Uh, my name is Rick Stoddard, and we're here to talk about uh, Skillstack micro-credential platform. Uh, I am the micro-credential coordinator uh, at the Division of Career and Technical Education, um, and I'm with uh, McKenna and Heather, um, two of my wonderful co-workers here, uh, that will also help us through the presentation, um, uh, and they will be monitoring the questions and, and helping with that uh, sort of information and such. Um, so with that, we'll get started with the running through Skillstack here real quick and give you an introduction to Skillstack and some of its features and, and tools. Um, whoops. Uh, so as I said, this is our wonderful Skillstack team, uh, Heather and McKenna uh, and myself, and um, uh, we'll have the contact information also at the end of the slide deck uh, that you can get in touch with us if you run into any problems or or issues, or you want to talk about skill stack, or learn a little bit more, or have a consultation uh, regarding uh, this this cool cool tool that we have. Uh, so for this presentation, our intended audience is uh, secondary teachers uh, who are teaching a CTE capstone course, but it's also open to anybody who's interested uh, in Skillstack and learning a, a bit more. Um, but I just wanted to bring up the intended audience because that's kind of what we'll be focusing, the lens we'll be fo focusing through when we go through the demonstration. Um, during the Q&A part, um, we can go into a little bit more different areas. I know there might be some post-secondary folks that are involved on the call as well. Um, there is a list of presentation resources that are available via this Padlet. So a lot of the links um, that we're going over um, uh, and looking at, you can uh, view some of these resources that are available there here as well. Um, attendees, as we've learned, are automatically muted. Um, uh, and uh, and so you're kind of in listen and view mode. And apparently you're, in, you're not in chat mode either. So you're only in question and answer mode. So you'll have to use uh, that tool as well. Uh, I want you to be aware, if you aren't already, that this presentation is being recorded um, and so uh, and will be posted on the Skillstack uh, YouTube channel. Um, and so if you don't want to be recorded, um, you can contact us afterwards. Uh, if you have something you want to bring up that you don't want recorded, you can bring it up afterwards uh, when we, we cease with the recording and uh, talk through uh, the issues there. Uh, if you have technical issues, uh, try to put it in the question and answer um, or if the chat comes live. Uh, please use the Q&A to answer, uh, submit questions, um, and then uh, we'll, uh, because we are recording this presentation, uh, we'll, uh, uh, if you'll raise your hand at the end of the presentation, uh, I want you to be a panelist um, so that we can share your video uh, and uh, do that um, through there. And so we'll answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Um, so our objectives today are to give an overview of Skillstack and micro-credentials, talk about the background and policy. Uh, we'll go through what's the difference between a micro-credential uh, digital badge and a stack badge. Uh, we'll talk, give ways about tips about getting started, uh, tips about awarding skills and issuing badges, uh, ways to, to introduce Skillstack to learners, um, talking about tracking progress and sharing badges. I'll do a de hands-on demonstration of Skillstack. Um, we'll go through some of the submitted questions that we had prior um, to the webinar. We'll talk or give some updates about what's coming next with the uh, skill stack, uh, and then we'll open up for general Q&A. To start, we have a short video um, that's an introductory video to skill stack. Um, it's about three minutes long, uh, and so uh, that'll give a bit, little bit of background for those of you that may be new to the, the tool or platform. So I'm going to start that right now. Throughout the ages, people have been on a path of discovery, looking for ways to improve, improve systems, processes, trying to make life a bit better each time a discovery is made. We expand and grow our minds and our skills. But how do we measure skill? How do we know if we've truly improved? Different sports have various point systems. Feats of strength are measured by pounds, distance, and speed. But what about our knowledge? For over a century, our education system has been shaped by classroom delivery, GPAs, and degrees. And yet we know, to be successful in today's world, 
Employees need critical thinking skills to problem solve, create, and collaborate. They also need a strong grasp of technical skills like welding, computer programming, or patient care. But how does a candidate communicate those skills to an employer? And how does an employer interpret them? A paper resume and transcripts begin to seem as outdated as a typewriter. To solve this problem, what if we created a new state-approved system to award micro-certification based on the skills individuals demonstrate? Well, we have. Introducing Skillstack Badges. So what is a badge? For starters, a badge is not a participation trophy. Badges aren't earned by merely attending a class. Instead, they're earned by showing a qualified instructor that each requirement for that skill has been mastered. Individuals are researching, discovering, and building their skills in real-world applications round the clock. Skills related to web design, networking, healthcare, and automotive, just to name a few. Skill stack badges are a way to communicate mastery of these skills and many more. The tasks and proof of mastery required for each of these skills are standardized through Idaho Career and Technical Education, colleges, and employers. Rest assured, individuals have truly earned each of their badges. Idaho Skillstack communicates skills. That's its true power. For individuals, badges show the world the skills they've mastered. For employers, badges show a clear picture of what a potential employee can do. Like a match made in heaven, the centuries-long search for measuring skill is over. We now have a system in place that defines, measures, and communicates a person's true skills and abilities. Badges encourage and award the everyday learning taking place in our fast-paced, information-rich world. Badges encourage lifelong education. Badges build confidence. See the difference Skillstack is making by measuring for skill and rewarding success. Check out the Skillstack website and start exploring the possibilities. Skillstack.idaho.gov So that was a, a quick little uh, blurb about Skillstack. Um, mine's not gonna, the rest of the presentation's not gonna have all that snazzy music uh, or uh, wonderful uh, graphics and animation. So you, you'll just have to have my wonderful voice in the, the slides that we're gonna go through. And so I'll talk a little bit more, uh, give a little bit more detail about uh, Skillstack and some of the, the policies and background. Um, so uh, as the video was talking about, Skillstack is about awarding digital badges for skills. Uh, in the graphic, uh, it is, uh, we're showing a badge um, about lending, uh, leading others. Um, and it gives a list of skills about formulating a strategy, identifying, meeting employer motivational needs, writing and communicating performance and expectation, et cetera. Um, and with skill, <clears throat> skill stack, um, what happens, what, how that works is the educator um, or teacher uh, would go through um, that has been approved to award uh, this particular badge. Uh, we'll have a roster of students and go, can go through and then um, uh, based on uh, each skill, uh, award those skills to students. And once all the skills are uh, demonstrated and earned by the students, they are awarded a badge. And you can see that this one is issue, gives an issue date. Um, and as students do that, they build a portfolio of badges of different skills. Um, and so these skills can then be exported and shared for different ways. They can be put on social media. Uh, they can be shared with employers that are interested in those particular skills. Um, they can be put on resumes and other, other ways. Um, other venues, and so um, it's a it's a way for uh, um, educators to assess uh, students or learners um, for the skills that they're demonstrating uh, in in the courses and classes that they're um, they're working on. Um, and so, state board policy uh, defines micro credentials, which uh, Skillstack is an issuer of. Uh, in, in this way as credentials that are awarded for mastery of defined skills or concepts. And so they'll include, include career and technical and academic skills. Um, 
they respect uh, reflect knowledge, skills, and abilities gained in increments. Um, and so uh, identified by outcomes that are equal to or less than a single course of study. Um, but they may also build on each other and complement each other. And this is what we call the stacked micro-credential. And so you can get more than one badge um, and it can be stacked into um, a larger badge. Um, and micro-credentials are most often distributed as digital badges. And so in the um, the images here on this page, we see the, the first image here is a blueprint reading for welders um, digital badge. And this other uh, example, as you can see, it's a stacked credential. And so if you unstack it, you can see in order to earn the stack credential here in this last, uh, this bottom uh, image is you can earn uh, the student or learner needs to earn a blueprint for reading um, badge as well as pass the TSA for welding badge, which will award them the um, stack credential. Um, and so uh, this is, uh, um, micro-credentials are defined uh, within the Idaho State Board of Education. Um, and so they're an official way to demonstrate accomplishment. So what's the difference between a micro-credential, a digital badge, and a stacked micro-credential? Kind of summarizing some of uh, what we just talk, talk, talked about and saw. Um, a micro-credential is a non-credit bearing or non-credit bearing credentials awarded for mastery of defined skills or concepts. Um, they're shorter than traditional degrees and certificates, and they're not measure, they measure skills and not seat time in general. Um, a digital badge is just a visual representation of a micro-credential um, or stacked micro-credential. Um, think of them as the, the, the physical or digital artifact, artifact, like a diploma when somebody graduates. And so it's a diploma, diploma uh, a badge is a, uh, acts like a diploma for a skill that a student or learner has mastered. Uh, a stacked micro-credential is a set of micro-credentials after learners meet specific outcomes. Um, and so those outcomes um, can be uh, additional badges or passing a specific assessment. Um, and when those, uh, all those outcomes are met from the that are required in the stacked micro credential. They may result uh, in um, uh, credit through uh, other institutions, um, depending upon their their particular policies. Um, oops. Uh, and so, why Skill Stack? Um, Skill Stack uh, was funded as a grant from the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, it's a platform that's been specifically developed for Idaho's needs. And so it's an in, you know, it's an Idaho specific platform um, uh, through the, the lens of Idaho to support our students for developing uh, uh, workplace and, uh, and learning skills. Um, it's a statewide approach. Um, there is yearly allocation uh, that is done, uh, that's in the, the state budget for system enhancements. Um, and the platform is also open uh, badge 2.0 certified. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. It's one of 43 certified worldwide. Um, and so uh, what that means to be open badge certified means that the, um, the digital badge itself is verifiable. So employers or registrars or academic institutions uh, can go back and verify that the skills were, when the skills were awarded and what skills were awarded. Um, it's stackable, as we talked about, that you can combine uh, these badges. Uh, these badges can be combined um, for uh, larger outcomes, um, such as awarding credit, and they're portable. And so um, what this means is that a, a student or earner can take these badges and um, put them in different uh, digital wallets, or they can uh, other credentialing systems. Um, they don't necessarily... They don't just stay within Skillstack. Uh, the the earners or learners can um, take them with them um, to different venues in different ways. Uh, and so, being an open uh, badge is actually a I we'll say a badge of honor uh, for Skillstack. Uh, it's one of we're one of four of the forty three, but we're the only state um, that I'm aware of uh, that is that is doing this. And so, Idaho is actually on the forefront um, of digital badging uh, in the United States. Um, within the badges themselves, and I, you know, this is kind of going, uh, looking under the hood of a, a badge, is the metadata. Um, and so, you know, the, as we're saying, the open badges are data rich. They have this verifiable piece that you can go back uh, and look at. Um, 
they're portable, stackable, and shareable. Um, but when you when you go in and you uh, you look at the metadata, what's underneath these badges or included in the these badges is these criteria of um, you know the badge criteria, the badge description, the badge name. Uh, you can attach evidence. Uh, the expiration date for the badge, the issuer, the issue date, uh, et cetera. And so it's kind of not just an image. Um, there is actually, you know, content that is included within these digital badges when they're shared uh, and and um, earned. So there are different ways, uh, as you mentioned, that you can potentially share the skill stack badges, which I think this, you know, is great because there's so much, uh, you know, different different ways that somebody might interact with this or or, or utilize this uh utilize these micro credentials um, they can be downloaded or exported uh, they can be added to resumes um, the uh, skill stack also provides uh, a certificate uh, so if somebody wants something that a physical item they can print that off that includes a qr code then I will, I'll demonstrate that that goes back to a particular badge that's earned they can be shared by social media by a link uh, HTML, um, et cetera. And so if an employee, you can share this with employers, you can share this with parents, um, you can share this when you're um, with a teacher um, or an instructor. Uh, and so there's a lot of different ways that uh, someone can engage and use uh, the badges that are awarded in Skillstack. Um, Skillstack uh, is growing um, and has grown. And you can see the growth here um, that, uh, started out in 2015-16, um, and now uh, at 518 badges that were awarded, uh, and now we're up to, you know, 35, 34,000 a year that are being awarded. Um, and so this is creating a great um, uh, um, pool of skills um, that employers might be interested in. It's a great a great list of skills, um, and there's all, all over 32,000 unique learners have um earned at least one badge in Skillstack. So there's a great potential uh, for employers that can engage with Skillstack. There's a, a great pool of candidates potentially to draw from, uh, as well as skills that have been earned. Some other uh, interesting things uh, uh, that Skillstack has been used for. Um, Skillstack um, uh, is great to measure and assess and validate student growth, uh, encourage students lifelong learning because uh, this is used in secondary schools and also in post-secondary, and so there's a there's a full career path um, for that, um, uh, and it's also to um, help with industry and engage with employers. Some examples: um, uh, recently, we created a set of um, stack badges for Idaho State University for their <clears throat> law enforcement um, uh, non non-degree part uh, program and uh, that can lead, those stack badges can lead to a basic tech certification um, of eight to 12 credits. Um, we're using Skillstack with the Idaho Department of uh, Correction for um, reentry skills and juvenile corrections for youth um, career exploration. Um, Post-secondary institutions are, are using uh, these uh, Skillstack to enhance student skill or to enhance the the degrees and classes that students are using uh, to demonstrate skills um, as well. Boise State University is using them uh, for employee development. Um, we're using them uh, for CTE teacher prep um, with the First Steps program. Um, and then those teachers that go through the that are awarded badges can also take those badges and be awarded credit um, for those um, for going through the First Steps program and being awarded the badges. Um, and work, workforce training set centers are using for rate, wage progression and local industry needs, among other things. And so Skillstack it has a lot of cool and interesting ways that it's being used and can engage um, students and learners in, in Idaho. Um, I'm, I'm really impressed with the use that it's being used with the um, Department of Correction um, with those populations to uh, help with skill, de skill development um, and uh, reentry skills. I think that's a, a great use uh, of this particular resource. Um, to get started with Skillstack, um, again, as I mentioned, this presentation is is focused on um, secondary capstone teachers. Um, and so that's one of our main uh, uh, users of Skillstack. Um, and uh, we what we do is we get the IC, the, the data from IC and um, 
use that to populate uh, class rosters and identify teachers that are teaching capstones courses. Um, and um, then those teachers would receive um, a login information from us. Um, the roster, as I mentioned, would be uploaded. They can validate the roster to make sure the students are in their class or not. Um, and then they can award skills um, when learners demonstrate them. And I'll, I'll go through that through the demonstration as well. Um, if you're not a capstone teacher, um, as, I, as I did mention in the other slide, other groups are using this, including, including post-secondary um, educators. Um, one way to, the best way to do that is to request um, to create badges. And I'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, about, and then we can talk about the process of, of uploading rosters and approvers uh, to approve those badges. Um, awarding skills um, in Skillstack is pretty easy, and I'll, I'll show you when in the demonstration. But as an approver and educator, you're only access to specific badges. Um, and so within those badges, as we've seen in some of the demonstration, there are specific skills, and you, you award each skill um, uh, to each student. Um, and then once all those skills um, are awarded, then a, then a badge is issued. Um, and students can see their progress about what skills they still need to work on. And again, that will be in the demonstration as well. Um, and so the different ways is it is up to the educator to validate those skills. And so they can do that, uh, whatever works for the educational environment or the particular subject area. So whether it's a assessments, uh, a formal assessment or hands-on demonstration, a presentation, an essay, observation, um, it's up to the educator to do that. And so for me, what's great about Skillstack is it's meeting learners where they are. Um, and so where that learning has happened, where that happening and where that is being demonstrated. One of the most important things that we ask of uh, those that are engaged with Skillstack, our approvers and educators, is that uh, they are a partner in introducing it to the learners. Um, the We want to make sure that it's um, that the pe that the people being awarded badges are aware that they're getting badges um, and that they have logins and um, are able to utilize Skillstack in all those ways we talked about sharing. Um, and so we do provide um, uh, a secondary and post-secondary um, um, learning plans that can be used, um, lesson plans that can be used. And um, one of the things that we do emphasize is that uh, learner, that the um, uh, educators help the the students put in their their student the student emails um, so that if they want to be contacted by employers that they can be uh, do so within the Skillstack system um, and so uh, it's important as as uh, educators that you're a partner in making Skillstack successful. So with that, I'll go into a, a demonstration here of Skillstack and show um, a few of the different things. Um, there are three uh, points of use or three type of user types uh, to think about um, that we'll run through. There is the teacher approver educator one. And so that's just one, one type. It's called kind of different things depending um, on, on where you are in Skillstack. Uh, we'll go through about approving badges. We'll look at the roster um, and we'll go look at um, in case you accidentally um, uh, award a skill and want to remove that skill, you can go, I'll show you how to do that as well. We'll look at it from the student point of view about what they looks like when they have a badge that's completed, um, what skill, they, how they can identify skills they might need, what the certificate looks like, um, and how some ways they might share it. And then I'll, I'll show you the uh, employer recruit uh, side about how they can use skill stack to base, to identify skills, uh, and then recruit potential um, job candidate, candidates using skill stack. And so let's see if I can get in here. All right, McKenna, can you give me a thumbs up that you see skill stack? Thank you. All right. Um, so this is the basic skill stack page. Um, uh, we'll go into the beta version of this, but I want to show you real quick um, uh, just a few things on here. Uh, there's this the wonderful video that you just saw. Um, and uh, different other uh, places if you're an individual employer educator to go around. Um, what I want to show you in here is if, if you go to the badges, you can see the list of badges that are available. Um, and on this left-hand side, you can see this, this colored menu. Um, and right now we're in the agricultural food and natural resources. Um, but you can jump into different, um, badges, 
um, uh, based on uh, the particular type. Um, and these are based on the, the career clusters, um, the CTE career clusters uh, that are used as a taxonomy to group the badges uh, and the skills. And so you can see that each of the different colors um, uh, are related to different badging or different subject areas. Um, and so if you go into the health sciences, um, we can go into, uh, say, the restorative assistant. And you can see the listing of different badges that are available. You can see there's a stacked badge here. And when I hover over it, it lists all the badges that a student would need to complete to get the stacked badge. Um, but they can get awarded these individual badges as well. And if you click on a badge, it gives you um, an overview, uh, introduction to the badge. It gives you the skills necessary then to complete the badge uh, as well. Um, and then if it's um, uh, if there are uh, who can who can award this badge as well, then are listed uh, on this uh, this uh, third screen as you go through it. Um, so as a stack badge, you can see uh, when you run through it, it would list then all the badges that are associated with the stack badge. And again, those who can award it. Um, whoops. The if I went into the dental assisting, you can see the TCC um, technical competency credit um, part stacked badge. And so, if a student was to earn this particular badge, you can see that there's a possibility for them to earn two credits um, if they complete uh, this particular badge uh, with the the stack badge if they go through it. Um, and so what they would need to do is to get all four of these badges, um, including passing the, the technical skills assessment um, test, and then they also would need to pass a dental assisting board infection control exam as part of this uh, to be awarded credit. Um, so you can explore the different badges that are available in here. Um, I'm going to go into our beta site. Um, which will allow me to demonstrate um, uh, different aspects of um, skill stack. And so I'm going to assign into the beta site um, uh, using uh, one of my, I'm a Simpsons fan. And so I'm going to sign in as, in as Edra, Edna Krabappel, um, who Bart Simpson was always in her class. Um, and she is interested in using and uses skill stack and so i'm going to log in as edna whoops it's because i was on a different screen um and when you log in as an educator and approver you'll have the my badges tab so if you've um, earned any badges yourself that'll show up an approver tab and a reports tab a badges tab an about tab, et cetera. I'm going to go start with the uh, the um, uh, approver tab um, and go into the badges. And so when you're under the approver setting, these are the badges that you as an approver or educator have been assigned that you can award skills in. And so in this case, Edna is able to award skills in agri agriculture, food, uh, and natural resources. She has, uh, she can award in information technology and she can also award in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, and so if she was interested in awarding particular skills under um, dairy science, these are the particular badges under here. You can see there is a stacked badge as well. And if she was interested, if she is, um, uh, concentrating on herd and health management. You can see that the roster that has been assigned to her, and I'll go into uh, demonstrating the rosters in a second, but these are the students that are currently assigned um, to uh, Edna. And we can see Bart Simpson has been already been awarded um, some herd and health management. Um, but the we can then see up at the top here, uh, these are the skills that are associated with this particular badge. And so if Edna had observed that um, 
uh, Ted or um, Todd uh, had, was a, is able to identify types of dairy breeds and breed selection can award the skill to Todd and Jimbo and maybe Nelson was absent that day. So Nelson didn't get the skill. Martin did, Lisa, Milhouse and Ralph. Um, well, actually Ralph is not a good student. So he misident misidentified some of the skills. And so we'll approve those skills or you can just click at the top and it will approve all the skills for all the students. So in this case, if we wanted to award all the skills for explain and identify milk barn safety, we could go ahead and approve those particular skills. So it's a pretty easy process to award skills, um, depending on the badges that you're assigned. I'm gonna go into the student rosters at the bottom of the approver menu. And this is, if you are um, uh, a capstone teacher, you'll often get this screen. And with this, this validate roster screen is when we upload uh, the IC data, IC data um, that includes the students associated with your, your capstone course. What it's asking to do is to go in to validate that those are the correct students. Um, and so you would click on the validate roster um, and we can look at these and decide that Disco Stu is indeed a student in this class um, and add them. You could approve the whole roster or you could remove ones that this is not my student, um, et cetera. And so we can see now that Disco Stu um, is part of the class. Um, you can then see the different periods. So he's in fall 2025, while all these other students are in, in, in different um, periods. Um, and you can, you can sort those if you want to in different ways. Um, other things that you can do on the roster menu um, is if you uh, click on the student accounts, you can see here um, it's asking to create a password for the student. If you'll note here on the login, these students do not have logins. Um, and so the students um, have been, um, in this scenario, um, uh, uploaded through the IC data upload, um, but they have not been had logins created. Uh, and so in this way, we would then ask the student, the teacher then to create a password um, for the student so that they can be able to log in. Um, you can also then change, uh, um, fill in the student information. And again, as I mentioned before, that the email is one of the most important things to, to include. Um, and so we can uh, add the email there if we needed to as well. Um, you can also then, uh, if these students are no longer in your class, you can of course get rid of them uh, using the, just remove the student option. Um, and if you need to upload, if you need to, uh, if you have a whole bunch of students um, to uh, put into a roster and this, there is a, uh, an Excel file that you can fill out information um, for the students uh, and then use that to do an upload, uh, to a mass upload a group of students. Um, and this is often used with our post-secondary folks. Um, or those that aren't coming through the I IC data upload. Um, and then you can also add a student uh, through this roster part. And so there's different, different ways to engage and control your roster with the students. Um, other things that might be uh, useful um, to know about is the recent approvals. Um, and so the recent approvals menu will uh, be useful uh, if to show these are the different skills that you've awarded recently. Um, and this is the place also that um, uh, if you accidentally awarded a skill and uh, you were like uh, Jimbo uh, actually was didn't do a really good, I'd accidentally awarded the skill to Jimbo about uh, explaining a milk barn safety, you can remove that skill um, from Jimbo. Uh, and so this is another place that you can do that in the improver menu. Um, so I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And um, we've looked at the approver from the educator side. Um, the next piece I'd like to talk about is looking at from the student point of view. 
And I'm still going to stay with being Edna. Um, but in this case, one of the main places that the, um, the uh, uh, student or, or learner would engage is through the My Badges tab. And these are badges that they've been earned. And so if you click under the My Badges, it goes to the portfolio um, that the students, uh, the badges that they've received. Um, and if you're seeing images that are missing, uh, this is because we're in the, ba the beta site. Um, and that's why you might not be seeing some images here for like the workforce readiness. Um, but in this case, Edna is, has um, badges that she's been awarded in education and training and human services. Um, and so then this portfolio then can be shared using this link at the top. Um, and so if you wanted to share this link with an employer, you could do so. Um, and see, then it changes. This is the link. These are my the, the skills that I've received. Um, and it will allow you to do that. Um, you can go into the badge itself. And so under the cosmetology, uh, Edna is working on a stacked badge for cosmetology. Uh, when you hover over it, you can see that she's received two of five of the badges. If you hover over the client support, this is saying that she's only received four of the six skills. And if you go into the badge itself, you can see how the image is not fully um, complete there. Um, you can see then it's saying the two skills that Edna needs to complete about um, preparing in client records and maintaining a, uh, a building a clientele list. Uh, and then as well as the skills that she has already completed. Um, if we go into a completed badge for hair, hair and scalp care, um, this is a badge that she's completed. You can see it's been issued on 224. Um, one of the cool things that she can do here if she wanted, she can print a certificate. Um, and this is a physical a certificate that she could print off uh, and share or put on the refrigerator um, or hang up in her place of employment. Um, but uh, one of the really cool things is, again, like we mentioned, the metadata that's embedded in the digital badge. This, this is a QR code here. Um, and if you were to click on the QR code, um, it would take you to this right here um, that lists the the when it was issued and the skills uh, that Edna has has included, as well as the evidence that's attached to it. And I'll show the evidence here in a second. So as we go through the completed badge for hair and scalp, again, the skills that Edna has received and when she received them. Um, and one of the cool things that both uh, educators can add to, to uh, students uh, badges they award, um, and also uh, learners can add themselves is an evidence place. So they can you can manage evidence and add different forms of evidence. Um, you can add a link to a portfolio or a link to a picture or something that's been demonstrated. Um, in this case, uh, Edna has added evidence that she can, uh, an example of ability to make a hairdo. Uh, and if, if and she shared this badge, an employer then could see this and click on it and would see as an example that Edna can also make a hairdo. And so that evidence feature is a, a really cool feature um, associated with the badges that, that are awarded. Um, other things under the My Badges is if you click under the Recommended Badges, It'll give uh, badges that have earned and expired. So the badges do can include expiration dates. Um, you can see the badges that, that Edna has started, um, badges that uh, Edna needs to work on, um, and some that she's already worked in uh, and been awarded skills in. Um, and so this is a good way for uh, a learner to go through the badges um, and see the path they need to, and the skills that they can gain uh, to complete badges or complete stacked badges. Um, 
I'm going to log out of Edna real quick. And I'm going to shift gears and show you what the employer recruit side looks like really quickly um, and then get through the slides and then make sure we have some time for to answer questions. Um, so I'm going to log in um, as an employer. I'm going to log in. If you're familiar with The Simpsons, Mr. Burns runs a nuclear power plant. So I'm signing in with as Mr. Burns. So you can see they have a different menu at the top. Um, so they have just have a, the recruit and the badges. And so they can look at the badges and figure out what skills might be useful. And so if Mr. Burns was interested in science and technology because he runs a nuclear power plant, he can see there's a nuclear uh, quality assurance badge that might be of interest to him if he was recruiting for that. And so if he's recruiting, he would could go into the recruit side. And the first thing a recruiter would do is identify the particular region they'd like to recruit from. And so some jobs um, are might be geographic centric. Um, and so someone might only want to recruit from region one. And if you select a region, you can see the number of badges, uh, skills, uh, badges that have been awarded in that particular area. Um, and you can see is that you add different regions that can grow. Um, and so in this case, I'm going to search for all. And you can then also do a search if you would like for a particular skill. So like I was, he's interested in nuclear and science. Um, and so he could either drill down more to get to a specific skill or a specific badge. And so we can do that and click on the badge uh, and you'll get um, uh, return the number that you can search for. All right. Um, and so again, you could go through and do a search for all. You can either put something in the keyword or just search directly um, by the skill if you know it. So again, we could just go into science and technology and pick off engineering and technology if we want to be general. He's interested in engineers for his for his plant computer or for his nuclear power plant. It down here returns the unique recipients. So we got 458. So 1,500 badges have been awarded. They're front 458 unique students associated with those badges. We could limit to a specific time frame. So within the last year. Uh, so it's only three within the last year. Uh, so it really can narrow the pool if you need to or expand the pool. Um, I'll go to 24. Um, so there's 200 uh, unique recipients. And then what Skillstack will do is it will send uh, a, an email within the system uh, or uh, to the student via their email um, that are is listed in the system. It does not share contact information with the um, employer. And so all the employer can do is these can add uh, a job link. Um, they can add an email or take away an email um, and uh, who can be contacted. And then what they can do then is when they are ready, then they can send this email uh, and it will go out to those 200 recipients that have uh, emails. They'll be notified and have opted in. And then they can um, decide, the, uh, the skill stack user can then decide if they want to apply to that uh, for more information for that particular job or not. Um, so those are the some of the different profile areas available in Skillstack. Um, I'm going to go back into the slides and hopefully get through those really quickly. I can find our slides again. So one of the questions that we do get um, that was submitted is, why don't I have a Skillstack account? Um, some possible reasons for that, um, you, looking at the IC data, is either the CTE program has not been approved yet, or the data in the IC upload is incorrect or has not been input correctly. And so it's not identifying uh, folks as um, uh, being a capstone teacher. Um, and so we get three, I, we do three uh, uploads from uh, IC data uploads. Uh, the next one is in mid March. Uh, and a similar student, similarly related, is why do I not see students in Skillstack? Um, it's because the uh, again, it's uh, it may not be an approved CTE program. 
um, uh, the data may be correct, not be correct in IC, or you might not be identified as a capstone teacher. If you ever encounter any of these these sort of things, please contact us. Um, but in general, these are time these are the first things that we go through when we receive that question is to identify if the CTE program uh, look at the IC data, look to see if the student if the teacher is a capstone teacher, et cetera. One of the other main questions is how many employers uh, or industry are using Skillstack. Currently, we have about 35, a little more than 35, um, that are currently uh, in Skillstack and registered in Skillstack. Um, one of the issues or in developing Skillstack and why it hasn't promote, been heavily, is heavily promoted to in industry is about building this candidate pool. It's sort of this chicken and egg of if we don't have enough candidate, we don't have a large pool of um, employers or, or uh, earners earning skills. Employers are not going to want to use the tool, um, and it's kind of vice versa. If the you know getting folks to uh, want to use this to get recruited for jobs, but there's not enough employers in there. Uh, what we were working towards the last few years with Skillstack is building a large candidate, uh, large um, candidates uh, pool of candidates. Uh, who then we can take to employers and say, hey, there's a lot of um, uh, potential skills uh, that have been awarded that may interest some of your job openings. Uh, and so we're currently on a larger push here to do more recruitment to get employers engaged with Skillstack and using Skillstack now that we have a larger pool of candidates that they can draw from uh, when they're looking for job candidates. So some of the things that come next is uh, we'll hold another webinar in April for office hours, um, uh, the dates to be announced, but kind of to help with some of the technical support uh, and hands-on. Uh, as I mentioned, we're working with doing, uh, increasing uh, our industry partnerships with uh, uh, promotional items that are geared towards them. Um, and so how uh, they can be more involved with Skillstack. Um, we're uh, continue working on enhancements uh, for, um, uh, our stakeholders and in Skillstack uh, with the platform. Um, there's some board policy work uh, talking about that definition of a micro-credential and how that's getting ex expanded for use in Idaho. One of the things, and this is at the bottom, is we are forming an Idaho micro-credential advisory council um, uh, that can help with some of this guidance uh, and uh, continued perseverance uh, as we work through this process and build out Skillstack as a tool uh, for uh, the state. Uh, one of the other questions that we off often get is how do I develop a new badge in Skillstack? Um, so if you didn't see the badge or you're not a capstone, it's not a capstone program or you're a post-secondary person that's interested in badging, um, the first thing you want to do is, um, you know, you want to be a secondary, post-secondary or educational agency or industry partner in Idaho. Uh, that's one of the main criteria. Um, you want to schedule a consultation with us, and I'll have that contact information next. One of the first things we're going to look for is to make sure there's uh, industry alignment uh, for the skills that you're interested in awarding uh, and that Skillstack, Skillstack is an appropriate platform for you. Um, and then once we've had that consultation, you want to identify the skills and or standards that the badges are, are supporting. The assessments you will use to determine those skills are being met uh, to suggest some item, some badge images, because that's always helpful for us. Uh, and then there's an application that you can use. Um, these are some of the badges that we recently created. That first steps program I mentioned about teachers getting uh, CTE uh, skills, uh, teaching skills, and then earning credit. Uh, and then we did work with ISU on their law enforcement badges as well. Again, my name is Rick Stoddard. Please please feel free to contact me if you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation, you just want to talk through Skillstack or, or micro-credentials. I'm really excited about this. Uh, my colleagues Heather and McKenna are also available um, and will also be able, available to do consultations. Uh, I will be sure to send a follow-up uh, email to those who've signed up for the webinar today. Um, Again, now I'd like to thank you for your time and letting me get through this. Uh, the presentation resources, a lot of the links are in Padlet. Uh, and now I want to open it up to any any questions that are left to be answered uh, in the Q&A. Uh, and I will stop sharing and take a drink.